next speaker is John Young from Perfect World. And uh, he's going to tell us uh, more ways to fund our projects, right? More ways. All right, let's do it. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everybody. Uh, can you hear me all right? How many people in this room are actually uh, game developers looking to get something funded? Wow, most. OK. Any financiers, VCs, publisher types here? One. OK. I'm about to give away all our secrets. So, <laughs> you, I guess you guys should all try to connect uh, after, after this. So I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, 10 tips to get your game funded or published. Why would I know anything about this? Well, first of all, I've, I've sold a lot. Um, I started a company called Peer Between. We raised some money, launched the product. That didn't work so well. Uh, I started another company called, Ma or actually I was an early member of another company called Massive. We sold that to Microsoft uh, a, a while ago. That, that worked fairly well and we raised a lot of money for it and I ran around essentially selling game developers and publishers on this idea of an in-game advertising network. And at Gazillion we raised uh, a lot of money and hopefully uh, we'll be uh, shipping great products soon. Um, but I've also bought a lot of stuff. I've been on the buy side probably more time. Um, I spent uh, four years as a venture capitalist. Uh, I worked at G Potato in licensing games, and I'm now working for a company called Perfect World, looking for the best developers, looking for the best talent, and we partner with, with folks. Uh, just a little bit about our company. Um, we're headquartered in Silicon Valley. We're working with great developers like Cryptic and Runic and Unknown Worlds. We're 100% owned by PWRD, a public company that is uh, uh, 429 million in revenue. And at that, most people say, huh? 429 million in revenue, all in free to play, digitally distributed online games? Uh, how come I've never heard of you? Uh, well, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're here and uh, we want folks to think of us. Um, launched 10 games live now, starting in 2008, a couple games the year after that, a couple more the year after that, four last year. And we took Star Trek Online free to play and Blacklight Retribution, which was the number two, well, it's the number two or three Steam free to play game right now. Um, and was in the top 10 for quite a while. Curse you, summer sale. <laughs> um, and what we're really excited about is, is Dungeons and Dragons Neverwinter that we're working on uh, for release at some time TBD with uh, Wizards of the Coast. And we're really thrilled about how that game is looking. And so we're looking for things like this you know, to buy uh, from you all. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, we've had a lot of accounts, tens of millions of, uh, of, of cumulative accounts. The revenue growth is growing 58% per year for four years. Uh, you know, this whole free-to-play thing is real. Um, lots of people, yeah, we publish. Um, okay, 10 tips to get your game published. I'm going to try this clicker here, see if it works. No. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay, do it the old fashioned way. Number one, LinkedIn is for seduction only. And what I mean by that is that this is uh, uh, the sort of note that I would love to get on LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure I got that in my dream. Uh, it's, it's short, it's to the point. It's, and, and I feel like this when I get that kind of a, a LinkedIn invitation request or, or message. But normally what I often get is something that looks more like this and I can't read it and I don't know what the point is and I don't know where this guy is going and I don't know what he wants and, and so this is sort of what I look like when I'm reading that. Worst of all, it's actually in the invitation. So I'm getting this thing, if I actually click accept, I lose this beautifully crafted essay. Um, it's, it's the most useless thing in the world, but you know what, LinkedIn has a solution for you because for the mere you know, 10, 20 bucks, you, a variety of price points, you can buy access to send that email to anybody so that I don't have to accept a friend request if I don't yet know you. So as people pitching to, uh, to somebody who's gonna fund you, take advantage of this, it's probably worth it. Um, it's one way to sort of get noticed in the first place. But don't use LinkedIn for the body of the message. Second tip, use friends and influence people. So sometimes, I know when it feels like you're trying to look to, get, you're trying to find the guy who you've identified to fund you and you want to reach that person and it feels like this guy is, is you know, distant and hard to get to and fraught with peril if I approach this person the wrong way. Um, use friends because if I'm in that role, 
and I've made money with somebody before, I'm much more likely to accept their input of who's good. Uh, if you're a social friend, it's much harder to just let it wait for a couple of weeks rather than sort of responding now. Uh, so, so find somebody who knows the person. Th this is really important. Um, and if you don't have that person, get an agent. Um, CAA, DDM, uh, ISM, UTA, all these. It's got to have three initials. Otherwise, you know, you're an ad agency if you've got four and you're an airline if you've got two. But if they've got three initials and they say they're an agent, they might actually provide some useful value. These people know my priorities as a, a buyer of, of games, and they don't bring me stuff that is kind of off topic for me. And also, they want to keep the relationship with me so they don't bring bad, thing, bad things to me. So it's just efficient for everybody. So agents can be useful. Third thing, simple summary for simple people. Um, we're simple. We're, you know, we're, we're sort of tired and we're, seeing a lot of pitches and nine times out of 10, you're much smarter than we are and you've been working with your project for a long time. And, and we come in and when we hear that what you want to do is revolutionize user-generated content and reinvent the whole system of anti-fraud and, and, and come up with great novel ways to have a new server backend architecture, you, you may have lost me if you didn't tell me what kind of game you're making. Uh, and, and this happens um, distressingly frequently. We need something simple. Um, and th these are some real examples that I've seen just recently. Um, Gears of War meets Descent. <laughs> so uh, these are things that actually some people in this room may have seen because these are real ones that are out there. But now I know, oh, Gears of War meets Descent. I have some sense of what pacing of, uh, and keyboard controls and camera angles and sort of generally what you're trying to do. And I'm intrigued because how would you combine these two games? Ah, okay, now you've sort of grabbed my interest and I've got visuals in my head while you go through your next uh, half an hour of description of what it is you're trying to build. League of Legends meets NBA Jam. Cool, okay. I think I get it, you know, and then, and then I do get it after a while. Hero Academy with deck building, great. I see what you're trying to build, but make it easy for me. Diablo with Marvel characters. That's, that's kind of probably obvious who's doing that, right? Uh, Dungeon Keeper meets Farmville. Stuff like this really helps. You'd be surprised because um, we haven't been living in your world as much as, as you have. So next, be ready. Be very ready. Um, what we mean here, I was actually looking for the Neo picture where he says guns, lots of guns, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so it looks like Trinity and Neo are shopping in like Kmart or something. <laughs> but as soon as you come in for a pitch and I like what you're selling, I'm going to ask you for all kinds of junk, right? And um, it's, it, it'll resonate better with the, uh, the person in my shoes if it's all ready and it doesn't take that long to create. Because if it takes a long time, I'm thinking that, oh, you don't have the bios of your team? Well, maybe that art director who's super hot is actually not committed to the project. Maybe it's kind of like, well... I'll go out and try to raise money, and if I get some, then you can quit your job. Maybe it's that. Um, maybe you haven't really thought through how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost, right? So we, the perception here is key. Like, you've got to have this stuff pre-made so that you can be fast when I ask for it. Um, it, will, it will be to your benefit. The second thing about that is you actually want to create an auction. You want to make me feel, as a buyer, that this is time limited and I've got this chance to participate in your great project, but so do all my rivals and nemeses. And if I don't act quick, and I don't put you on the fast burner, then I might miss out. So that's a psychology that you can create, but the best way to do it is, you know, you should be presenting this thing to your hit list two, three, four times, well, maybe two, three times a day, um, and be pressuring everyone to keep up and make a decision. You want uh, a yes is the, a fast yes is the best answer. A fast no is the second best, and the worst is just dragging on of maybe for all sides, really. Fifth point: help me persuade internally. So there's different personality types, and uh, you know this is the Myers Briggs version of, a, of an eye chart of personality types. You know, go ENTJ. Um, but but. If you're in pitching to me and it seems like everything's going great, realize that in all likelihood, I can't just make this decision to invest by myself. I've got to get colleagues involved. Um, I'm like the front line of a process and hopefully a big influencer in the process, but I, I can't do it single-handedly. So we need things that are gonna persuade all other sorts of people. I'm not the only character type that you need to sell to. So I need anecdotes, you know, uh, things like, 
hey, Brandon Beck says all the Riot guys are playing this after hours, or you know, John Romero says it's the, the best thing he's ever seen. Something like that persuades some people. Um, facts, just being on top of the facts. You know, hey, there will be five character classes. The client will be 500 megabytes. You know, th things like that actually persuade other people to make it feel real. Art, we always need art. Um, concept art is just critical to getting a pitch sort of listened to and, and received the way you want it to be. Um, systems. We have a guy who every game, if it's lobby based or session based, I know I will be asked what mode is going to be the most popular. And you know, if you don't arm me with some things like that that speak to system design, then I can't answer him and the process slows down. Um, and historical sales are huge too. You know, what have you done before? What have you shipped before? How many units? How many dollars? How can you, yeah, that, that reassures uh, some segment of people. Um, I think most people who you pitch to have some blend of all this, but it's important to realize that just because you know the frontline person who you're talking to who's motivated all by art, it doesn't mean that the guy behind them, you know, the finance person, will be motivated by the art. All right, next one, time it right. So this is the, this is the redacted version of my inbox, and, and, and this is sort of what governs my life here. This is how I feel good or bad about a day, uh, sadly, is, that is, is how many emails are still in there and how many have I not read yet. Um, this is sort of more important than my boss or my wife and sort of making me feel good on a day. I like to get back to people. But what happens when you go to something like Casual Connect is that you get this uh, sort of explosion that, that happens here and you don't really have the time to respond in a timely manner to emails. And what happens is you get these sediment sedimentary layers that form and your email is some, somehow down at the bottom of that underneath the cyanobacteria and the worm tubes. And I try, I really try to sort of dig through that, but sometimes, you know, the, the thing that comes in is my boss wants something, or, you know, here's the, something blew up, you know, and all of a sudden your email that came on the first day of a conference is down there somewhere, and it doesn't really get attended to as timely as it would if you'd timed it differently. I used to think that this was different. I used to think as an entrepreneur that, hey, my idea is so good that the guy's going to be in Aruba and he's going to sort of drop everything and start making phone calls to get his people on this, you know, because the, the power of the idea stands through. But, um, you know, to be more humble about it, you know, n nah, you know, none of our ideas really do <laughs> for the most part. Um, so if you can get this to people in the right time, if you can divine their schedule and when they're doing a roadshow and when they're at a conference and work around that, it's uh, hugely to your advantage. Next one, confidence, milestones, and certainty. So you may think when you say, born from hard fought experience, that yeah, in our dev shop, we find the fun first and we're agile and we have a scrum methodology and first we get in there and we, uh, we have the bravery to admit that we know what we don't know. And, and, and you may think that you know, this is the image that goes into the financier's head, but it's not. It's, it's much more like this, um, where you're, you know, I think the people who put up the money have this experience of being three million dollars into a two million dollar project, and, you know, the people are looking at you saying it's like, well, I don't know, do you want to pay more or do you want to like let it all drop now? And we're like, ah, oh, of course we want to finish the project. And you got the adorable CTO there just saying it's like, I can build whatever you want me to build. What do you want me to build? And. Oh. You know, so what we need to believe, by contrast, is that you are the person who is unlike the other people. You, 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 you're smart enough and visionary enough and prescient enough to know what exactly it's going to take to finish this game, even with all those uncertainties and hurdles. Um, and we sort of really desperately want to believe that because um, that sort of picture over there is, is just, uh, I've been there too many times and it's sort of painful and we always want to believe that you are, uh, different and, 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 and better and you somehow know in advance before you've built it. Um, half my brain knows that's totally impossible, but the half that is willing to put millions of dollars on the line and justify that to my boss needs to believe that you are that person. Um, trust is hard to create. So uh, yeah, if I've worked with you before and I know how you work and I know you deliver and do what you say you did, okay, fine, I can trust you with more, but most of the time you're trying to convince somebody who doesn't know you yet, so you've got to be really buttoned up in this category. Okay, this one might be not be popular um, for the uh, IGDA, but, but for guys like Perfect World or guys like venture capitalists, maybe it's different for seed guys or, or Kickstarter, but we, we probably don't want wildly original. 
we want something that's one, de one standard deviation away from something that you guys have already made before. So what doesn't come over too well is like, hey, we've done these casual based, uh, you know, match three games, but we all play World of Warcraft, so we'd love to experiment with a persistent synchronous world. Um, we think we've got a unique take on it. It's like, yeah, well, that's, that's hard. Um, you might end up making something that's a little too Baroque for, for most people's taste. Um, and and, and it's, it's, it's great to say, oh, you know, we've made atmospheric first-person shooters in a lobby base, and we've learned a lot from doing the last three of those, and now we want to add in some role-playing elements. You know, that's great. Oh, we can believe that. We, we, we have faith that you can execute on that vision. Um, but it's pretty hard if you're going too far afield from, from what you've proven you can do before, because making games is hard, right? It, it's really hard. The next thing, stand out. So... How many people know this guy? Uh, or this guy? <laughs> so this is uh, Daniel James of Three Rings, now Sega, and John Romero, uh, now of Loot Drop. So these guys are great guys uh, to guys on the buy side for two reasons. They've got distinct looks and they've got distinct personalities. And when you meet them, and if they're pitching to you, they stand out. They're different. Now, I wanted to see how different, so I, I went, it's like, there's my LinkedIn picture. And I just started going through alphabetically what do the biz dev people look like, or the VCs? And I just got to see. <laughs> and I, y you know, okay, so fine. So maybe there's a role for this. The, the suit on your team could look like this. But the thing is, if I go to E3 and I'm meeting uh, uh, seven meetings a day, hearing pitches from guys who look like the stuff on the bottom, you don't, you don't stand out. It'll be hard for people to remember, oh yeah, that one. Right? But if you look and act like Daniel or John, you have a much stronger chance. So don't be afraid to you know, embrace your idiosyncrasies. Dye your hair blue. You know, beard guy. You know, we love beard guys. Because beard guys stand out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's shocking just how many people who sort of look the same, and they're being professional and respectful and everything else. But um, we're in a creative industry, so it's just fine to be uh, a little, little different. Um, a great example of that by actions, not by visuals, is uh, I, I visited Turtle Rock a little, while late, uh, a little while ago, and they walked us over to their dragon that was in a sort of an aquarium-like cage, and they just made this part of the office tour, you know, after meeting these guys for half an hour. And they proceeded to take a hawk moth that was uh, actually fluorescent blue and started to put the hawk moth into the dragon's mouth, and the frickin' dragon ate the thing in front of us. And we were blown away. Um, and so we remember Turtle Rock as being kind of distinct. Um, <laughs> whatever you've got that's like that is actually a positive. So everyone go buy Dragon, right? Um, help us believe is my tenth tip on how to get uh, funded or, or published. We, we want to believe that your company is the one, right? We want to believe, like, in this meeting, I'm going to uncover the gem that's going to make me look good and justify my salary and prove to everyone that my tastes are better than everyone else. Like, we want you to win. And what we want to believe, specifically, is you're the A-team, right? You're the best of what you do. And what really helps is if you're distinct. Um, so what, uh, you know, we, we, we got strategy guy, we got, like, uh, tough guy, we got, like, charisma guy, and we got, like, engineer, helicopter flying guy. And, and that's sort of the same on your team as you come in to talk to us. So we sort of want to believe that the art guy is, you know, wildly creative, and so he should sort of look and act the part. We want to believe that the CTO is kind of brilliant and, and deep, and that's great, you know. And what gets confusing for us, because again, remember we're simple, um, is when you start to see a guy who seems to be too generalist, and he's answering every kind of question, and you kind of sneak him looks down to the business card saying, isn't that the CTO? Well, why does he keep talking about the, the art look? And, and, and that gets confusing to us. So what we kind of you know, play your part and agree before you go into these pitch meetings, ah, okay, you're the, you're the schedule and milestone guy, and you're the, the person who's the vision holder, and you're the guy who tie breaks the decisions, because that makes it feel more like you're the team who's actually going to be able to do this uh, in the crunch modes and at midnight when all this uh, crap is hitting the fan. So, so those are my 10 tips, and you know, what publishers and financiers really want is a, a fully finished game that's perfectly balanced, you know, with a, a, the perfect team, and it's free to us. Um, so if you've got that game, uh, Perfect World and I would like to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks.
So I guess we have some time for some Q&A. Yes, sir. Can you discuss equity and valuations? Sure, equity and valuation. So it's uh, it's an interesting topic um, because there's sort of in my world there's there's sort of two types of deals. There's the dev pub deal, where I give you money to to produce to milestones, and then you know I have some control in a micro sense over what you guys are doing with the money we give you. And then there's an equity deal which in a lot of cases we set a valuation and then I'm maybe on your board or not, but I have less control fundamentally on what you do. And it's more your company that I'm sort of betting on you to figure it all out in the interim. Um, so a lot of people do get hung up on the valuation, um, but I think in a lot of cases it's, I mean, if, if you have a high valuation, of course, what that means is you keep more control of your company and it looks like your company is worth $10 million uh, pre-money, if that's what we say the number is, and then I fund you with $5 million, so you're 50, money, 50 million post-money, and that, that's great, and that sets you up on a curve. But you also want to be careful that you don't sort of overemphasize that too much. First of all, um, people think it's ridiculous if y you're too ambitious on that, and most people aren't the next Steve Jobs, and most people um, might spend too much time fighting over that. And also realize that this is not the last step of the game in most likelihood for you. I mean, maybe you're going to reach cash flow profitability and never take equity again, but maybe not. Maybe this is your Series A and you're going for your Series B next. So you don't want to peak too early and then try to justify why you need an up round later. Um, so anyway, that, that starts to maybe address your topic. We could talk for hours about that one. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, well, on the indie scene, I mean, you know, Kickstarter is sort of a competitor to us right now. Um, you know, it, it'd, be, it'd be foolish for me, I think, to see the great deal and then pass on it, and then it gets kickstarted and it turns out to be the next Riot Games, right? I mean, we'd be kicking ourselves. Um, there are, uh, there's an example of Realm of the Mad God. Any of you guys know that game? So it's a really cool game, and it just got picked up by Kabam. Um, I passed on it. I'm, you know, I don't know. Time will tell. It didn't really fit our portfolio, and it wasn't exactly right for us. But was that stupid? You know, maybe. Um, so you know, Kabam is not what I'd necessarily call my direct competitor. But hey, in a funding sense, yeah, they're out there looking for great talent, just like we are. Oh, yeah, so uh, Perfect World has got 10 PC-based, you know, almost all MMORPGs. We've got a great game with Zombie uh, that's a first-person shooter, Zombie here in Seattle, um, that is an external development deal. Um, but we've, to date, been, been on the PC. We're really intrigued. We're really attracted to the fact that all of our PC players are starting to spend more and more of their times on tablets, especially, uh, you know, maybe our games don't translate as obviously to, to the small screen. But, you know, we're really intrigued to talk to people who are, are doing that, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, we're just kind of back to back, so I'm, we're going to take a quick five-minute break, and then Chris Earhart's going to come up and talk to us.